What do you call the hard rock genre that deals with forgetfulness? Yep. Hey internet, I'm Steve, and welcome to Raffo. The Lost Metal, the final book in the Wax and Wayne series of Mistborn Era 2, has been released. I mean, I assume you already know that, considering you're watching a video by a guy with a completely healthy preoccupation with the Cosmere. And it takes one to know one? First, spoiler-free thoughts. I was worried going into this book. Brandon had said in multiple interviews, streams, and Q&As that the gloves were off for this one, in terms of connections to the Cosmere as a whole. I didn't want him to go too far too fast, to run out of secrets before the end and lose the mystery. I was still worried, and frankly, surprised for the middle third of the book. It felt like too much, seemed like there was a major reveal every other chapter, especially when <laughs> gets brought to the <laughs> I was completely sold for the last third. While the connections and developments are significant, I don't think they're too much. Especially while going back through for this video, I'm pleased at how many questions I still have, and at all the different directions society, technology, and magic can go by the next era. It definitely feels like a setup for Era 3, but that's not a bad thing. Now, to dive in. Of course, spoilers for all of Mistborn, Elantris, Emperor's Soul, Warbreaker, Stormlight, all the things! The prologue features a story about Allomancer Jack, who at this point has been adventuring for likely a little over a year. We know he's still around 29 years later, when Wayne is 40, so Jack is probably a little over 50, similar to Wax's age. During Lost Metal, he's 49. And he and Steris have kids! Maxillium and Tindwill. <laughs> Love it. In the Senate chamber, Michelle Yeoman is the first to vote against the bill. Her wedding was the scene of the Vanisher's abduction of Steris back in Alloy of Law. Law. And she may very well be a world hopper, considering Hoyd came to specifically congratulate her on her nuptials. Wayne and Marisi trudge through sewage to find a set hideout. Wayne fires a gun without shaking. Apparently he's getting better at that. And we see more alimantic grenades in use. Cadmium, man. It's so good. Marisi takes out a cycle, which is the lowest level in set leadership, below suit and sequence. He's the first person we see who gets glowing red eyes, and has a trellium spike. The last couple we saw from Palm were taken by the Chondra. Side note, the description of Trellium, silvery metal with a red cast to it and dark spots similar to rust, is how Atium was first described in Brandon's unpublished first attempt at the Mistborn story. I know this because I'm a nerd. Melan is heading off-world, officially to Shadesmar. It's no longer just a Rosharan term! The gang does science, and it gets explodey, while Wax specifically isn't wearing a mask. Beforehand, Vendel said that Etmetal can't be divided, so long as as harmony remains harmony. So is the reason why they were able to successfully create teensy bits of Atium and Loracium because harmony is starting to split? Trell is autonomy. Sazed very clearly says so. You were not expecting so straightforward an answer. No! He gives us a lot of information about Bavadin's specific intent. Divide off from the rest of us. Go her own way. Also, a little bit about connection. The use of a god metal as a spike, capital C, connects you to that shard. Renette and her wife go out with Wayne. See guys, he told us all in chapter 14 he was dead. His financial decisions are amazing. I mean, he he basically invents professional baseball and athletic sponsorships. Marisi is pushing Reddy to create a special squad specifically for dealing with Metalborn. Sounds like a setup for Era 3 to me. The sting happens in Bilming, which is predominantly built in a Taldane architectural style known as Brutalism, which has implications to their technology level. Dayside or dark side. Uh... When death comes to bail them out from Entrone, the constable that pulls a gun is a seeker. Is that just a nice allusion to Marsha's original power, or is it an excuse for someone else to know now that Wax was burning copper to resist Marsha's rioting? Marsh tells them that Autonomy's followers have hemallergy, which, like, we already knew, but she also has an army. How much should we be looking for hemallergy in the wider Cosmere? Has Trell spread the secrets of spiking to other worlds? The Marowil flower is straight up the ghost blood symbol. I noticed that as soon as they released the new hardcover for Secret History, and with how much that flower was part of the promotional material for the Lost Metal, we knew the ghost bloods were going to be heavily involved. I mean, swag from Lost metal release. It's it's right. Moonlight! When I was first reading her interaction with Marisi in the truck, this was my thought. 
Ah, is she Rosharan? Epicanthic folds, straight black hair. Could Shallan have gone off world after Stormlight? Wait! She's short! It's Shy! If my timeline is correct, we haven't seen her for at least like 800 years. I really need to do an updated timeline video. Shy connects us to the Ghostbloods, who are of course a major player in the Stormlight Secret Societies competition. Though the Scadrian branch seems to be a lot less ruthless than their Rosharan counterparts. Ruth more? There are so many connections to the larger Cosmere once we shack up with the Ghostbloods. Chapter 39 gives us identity locks, a new primary system named Bjendal, Bjendal, one of the two. Apparently Nalthians are trying to use perpendicularities for mass transport, mentions of Roshar and Thalen, whose letters interlock, manipulating connection to understand language, an awakened lock on a safe containing purified door, and then predictions on what's going to happen to Scadrian society once aluminum becomes more commonplace. And then there's the people. We first meet Codenames Are Stupid, who is actually Kaisi from Cell. Her brother is a Dain, the Elantrian who knew exactly how many steps it was to Teod at the end of the book. She also has a Sion, this Sion, Deo, whose Aeon means stability or security. Also, she's got a puppy. Twin Soul is straight up from Aether of Night, or at least the magic he uses is. Utilizing pink Aether to create spectacles, form knives and pens on his fingers, make the 3D map of the city, and eventually grow a mech suit. Dude. Aethers apparently predate the Shattering, and maybe Adenalsium itself. They also may somehow enable connection tricks to understand languages too, though I'm not sure how on that one. Given that this is the first time we've canonically seen Aether in use, I'll get to work on a video about them too, though it might need to be after January for reasons. Shy's got a few soul stamps, a couple universal ones that work on any object, which is new, and then her essence mark, which turns her into an Elantrian. Immediately after she does so, she draws a map of the Elendel Basin with a strange rune at the center. And now we've seen Selish Magic hacked. Some how. She gets away with a burned book containing notes on how to create Metalborn out of hemologically compounded spikes. Spikes that grant power taken from those with no power. They get chased by different chimeras than chased wax in Shadows of Self. Two spikes instead of one. Kelsier is still in contact with the southern continent, and is on his way up via airship during everything. He implies that he can steel push, but his chat with Sazed at the end almost explicitly indicates that he doesn't have allomancy. But if he doesn't have allomancy, how did he create the bands? Spook? Also, Hoyd is just absolutely everywhere in this. He's apparently been working as Wax's coachman for years. He's referred to as Wax's new coachman in Shadows of Self, joins the sting in Bilming, where he acknowledges Shy, I guess they might be on better terms now, gets a pet rat thanks to a Wayne trade, and then is in the right place to pick up Wax after his first fight with the set's souped up coin shot. And then, of course, rescuing Wax from Ellendale Bay after Wayne does his thing. The mayor's mansion in Bilming is called the Silver house. I wonder if that's significant. Speaking of the bands, something is going on there. They are apparently drained, and they get taken back into Malwish custody. That'll probably be important later. Also, hi again, Tensoon. Another random side note, Tensoon is confirmed to be a wolf-looking dog, not a, like, Irish wolfhound. Merisi makes it to the artificial perpendicularity and sees Trell's army, thousands of inhuman soldiers with golden skin and glowing red eyes, living statues with rifles of an advanced design. Who are they? Are they actually living statues? Awakened, Khaled's Phantom style? Nightblood style? Or has Autonomy somehow figured out how to spike non-living things? Or, given her original planet of investment, are these some extension of Taldane Darksider technology? The eight Ghostblood agents who go to help Steris overlooking Elendel Bay may have powers from off-world, including potentially at least one Skybreaker. Is all this legal? Telson turns gray when Autonomy leaves her. That's significant. And yeah, Wayne is the goddamn hero. Crafts the perfect speed bubble and freezes time for God himself, which has interesting implications. Epilogues, riddled with connections, of course. Merisi meets Kelsier face to face and dumps him. Dlavel, the bloodthirsty southern Scadrian from Silverlight, has a sister running amok on Roshar. Maybe it's Silverlight that makes people less Ruthmore? Kelsier estimates building height by sixteens of feet, which 
makes sense. The chapter numbers in the Steel Alphabet are base 16. It seems he has only one spike pinning his soul to his bones. The Chondra have found a way to create Atium, and says it has become a significantly better liar. Kel doesn't even catch him. He casually drops the name of another planet, Mythos, and pushes for interplanetary travel and technological advancement. Which means Kel is likely behind the ones above from Six of the Dusk, at least at some point. Melon is going through Shadesmar with a Shodel guide, one of the three sapient species on Yolan, the original Cosmere planet, besides humans and dragons. And they come across a group of hundreds of people in strange outfits and odd red hair. The most common theory I've seen, is it a bunch of horn eaters? Or listeners? Marisee's eventually going to be governor. I assume in Era 3 we'll hear of the impressive political advancement by one Governor Colmes. Or maybe Governor Neverfar? Marsh is feeling better. The the treatment is working. Huh? He claims to be using emotional allomancy to walk around unnoticed. Wax doesn't buy it. Speaking of Wax, he still has his Duralumin spike. It's incredible to me that this book has taken hemolurgy, which was previously exclusively gruesome and evil, and turned it into something more plausible, even laudable in some. I also love that Marsh intervened to get Vin's statue accurate. In the Ars Arcanum, Chris's essay on spikes and compounding is fascinating, and really just needs to be read. She interviewed Marsh. The image of Iron Eyes as death is apparently spreading through the Cosmere. And apparently you can't compound via hemolurgy in Era 2, something that I'm sure will get figured out in the future, for good or ill. And the actual lost metal? Well, it turns out it could either be Atium or Loracium, considering Wax managed to make tiny bits of both. While we're here, I recently found a connection for Mistborn to Threnody and Roshar. Brandon isn't known for his retcons. In fact, he's done so few, the additions to Elantris and Kaladin sparing Zeth in Words of Radiance, that I assumed there were no others. Well, I was wrong! In my, uh, this edition of Hero of Ages, Vin goes and meets Slow Swift, who was an homage to J.R.R. Tolkien himself. He talks to her about stories, long tales some call them, whispering of mist wraiths, sprites, and brawlins and such. Nothing too suspicious. Sprites is a generic term, and Brandon has confirmed that brawlins are just a local myth. But in the 10th anniversary edition, this one, he says mist wraiths, shades, spren, and brawlins. Slow Swift seems to be Cosmere aware. I mean, it's freaking Tolkien, of course he is. Thank you for watching! Huge thank you to the incredible artists that gave me permission to share their art. You can support them at the links in the description. Speaking of support, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Then you too can see your name up in lights and get special shoutouts like my man Doug, or even get specialer shoutouts like Chris! You deserve all the love. Life before death, strength before weakness, reading before finding out. Hi, JJ. Hi, JJ. Hi, JJ. It was very cool, JJ. Thank you for showing me. There's my child. Ah. Uh...